Hey, so if you work in tech or you're thinking about a career in tech, you don't need me to tell you how much there is to learn. But some of the things I can help you with are figuring out what you should be learning in the first place, how to test your knowledge on those subjects to make sure you're learning the right parts, how to get yourself exposed to more opportunities to increase your chances of landing a job, and how to use modern infrastructure tools like Zeet to build better, more professional grade infrastructure. If that's something you're interested in, check out the link in the description down below. And then we're also gonna dig into it a little bit deeper in this video. But for now, let's fire up the studio and let's get this video going. Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers. And in this video, we are talking about tech overload. Job descriptions can often seem unrealistic. Companies want Terraform, Ansible, AWS, GCP, Python, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Postgres, Docker, and on and on and on. If you don't have those skills, it can seem overwhelming. So what do you do? Well, first thing I want you to do is put this in perspective. Every required skills section of a job description is a wish list. As a matter of fact, let's just replace the words required skills with the words wish list. Most companies don't even know what they want, so they list a lot of stuff that they think might be helpful. Well, job descriptions are the same way. Most companies will hire the person who best matches their job description, not the person who perfectly matches their job description. But still, that does leave a lot of technologies to learn about. There's absolutely no way around that. You've got a lot to learn, but you have one thing going for you, a checklist. All of these companies are giving you a checklist of the things that you have to know. It's a lot like someone giving you the winning numbers for the lottery. All you have to do is go down to the store and play those numbers. So here's how I want you to approach it. Go on the internet and search for the jobs that you want. For every company that's hiring for that position, write down their required skills. Keep doing that for all the jobs you can find and you're gonna to start to see some similarities between the requirements. So now sort this list by the requirements that were found most often and that's where you start studying. Use this as your checklist and just grind it out. Yeah, it's still gonna be hard, but with hard work and dedication, you can knock this out. And remember this, you don't have to be an expert in all of those things. You need to be conversational about them. That means that you're familiar enough about the technology to talk about the implementation, how it interlinks with other parts of the environment, and the trade-offs associated with different approaches. There's another approach you can use with this too, and that's to leverage tools that abstract some of this away for you. Like if you wanted a new car, you don't have to start saving scrap metal so you can melt it down and forge a new engine block, right? So why would you do the same thing when it comes to managing your infrastructure? Take Zeet, for example. I can point it at my existing GitHub repo, answer a few set of questions, and it will deploy it to AWS, GCP, CoreWeave, Kubernetes, and more. This is a great solution for development teams that don't have a dedicated infrastructure or DevOps team. It also works for infrastructure and DevOps teams who want to let their dev teams self-service their own apps because you can control the infrastructure that they can deploy to. Everything built runs in your cloud account so you retain full control and it's all built using best practices so you know that your applications are provisioned correctly. That's also one other use case for Zeet. A lot of times when we're learning something new, there's a big knowledge gap between the documentation and the implementation. With Zeet, you can deploy your application and then go poke around in your cloud provider and see exactly how it was deployed. There's one other thing I wanna say about this too. I know a lot of y'all have concerns about being tied to one vendor, whether that's AWS, GCP, or whoever. So check this out. With Zeet, I can change the cloud provider in the app config, save it, and boom, it gets deployed to a different provider in a matter of minutes. So go check it out and let me know in the comments what you think or share your thoughts on your favorite social media platform and tag me in it, which takes us to the next point for managing tech overload, conversations. 
A critical part of building your tech skills is practicing having conversations about the technologies. So that means go to user groups, go to meetups, attend local conferences where you can meet and talk to people who are doing what you want to be doing and the people who are hiring for the jobs that you want. If AWS or HashiCorp or whoever is putting on an event in your town, go because it's guaranteed that not only will you learn something, but that event will also be attended by recruiters and hiring managers looking to fill open positions. And don't limit yourself to just DevOps events. If there's an event going on in your town for React or Golang or whatever, just go. Because even if you don't know anything about the topic, you just might land a conversation with someone who's struggling to implement DevOps on their own project, which provides you with the opportunity to talk about solutions with a person who's in need of a solution. And that just might lead to a side gig or a full-time job. Last thing I wanna say in this video is go apply for jobs because you don't get experience interviewing for positions unless you're interviewing for positions. And you're gonna to have to apply to a lot of jobs anyway, so you might as well get started. And that's worth stating that again. When you send out 50 resumes and only get one response back, it's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. That happens to everyone. That's the world that we live in because when you send in your resume, you're competing with every other person on the planet. So it's going to take some time for your resume to bubble up to the top or get in front of someone who's going to give you a call on it. So don't take it personal. Don't get discouraged. That's just the business that we're in. All right, let's wrap this video up. Key takeaways here. Use the job descriptions as a checklist of things I must know. And remember that no means no, as in K-N-O-W, not an expert. And yes, this is still a lot of work, but if it were as easy as flipping burgers at McDonald's, it would pay like you were flipping burgers at McDonald's. I want you to test your knowledge by having conversations with people, doing the jobs, and by interviewing for those jobs. And finally, and this is probably the most important thing I've said in this entire video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the outstanding, amazing, mind-blowing, thought-provoking, creative, funny, educational videos that I create. So um, that's all I got. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.